And when I think about the magnitude of what he's done oh, yeah. and the strength of who he is, yeah. oh, it's the combination for me that allows me to just give God glory. Y'all yeah. missed that. I got to say that again. When I think about what he's done yeah. and I think about the strength of who he is, it's the combination that allows me to give God glory. Y'all still don't understand that. Nobody else in the world could do what he did. So only one person qualified to be the one to do what he did. And that one decided to do it. Oh my gosh. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, look at your neighbor take your neighbor and say, Oh, but I'm glad. So bad he is. Oh, 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 If he didn't love me. Now, have you just taken a moment? I know you know who you are today. I know you said your accomplishments today. But have you ever thought about if he did not send his son to die on the cross for your sins? Where would you be today? Antoine, the church has become desensitized on the cross. Yeah. We, we glory cars. Yeah. We glory advancements. We glory money. We glory position. But we don't celebrate cross no more. We don't celebrate the sacrifice that took place when he sent his son who lived and died on the cross. You know, old school church, old school church got excited about stuff like blood. <laughs> it wasn't cause, it was just blood. Because when I start thinking about the blood that Jesus shed for me, We're not no cavalry. I know it was the blood. That's why the song I said, let them wipe away my seat. Then he said, look and let me call again. Put your finger in your ears, ain't nothing but the blood. So I'm just saying, it comes, it comes, it comes, it comes. The blood. 
what's yours. When I'm going through something, I still bleed the blood. The blood can get anybody know I bleed the blood of Jesus. Hey, I bleed the blood of a friend. Hey, I bleed the blood of my friends. I bleed the blood of my household. The blood still works. The blood still works.
Examine me. Examine me, God. The song says, look at my heart. Put me to the test. To the test. Know my anxious thoughts. Look to see if there is any idolatry ways. Then lead me on the eternal path. Message of the Bible says it like this. Investigate my life, O oh God. Find out everything about me. Cross, examine, and test me. Get a clear picture of what I am about. See for yourself whether I've done anything wrong. And after you've done all these things, then guide me on the road to eternal life. Just for a brief moment, really brief moment, I just want to highlight this, 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 this passage here. I, I'm going to speak from the topic, search me. Search me. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do. Use me for your service. Speak through me today. That you be glory out of everything I say and do. No words of your, but all words of mine. I thank you now for what you shall do. Jesus name, amen. You may be seated. Search me here this real quickly. Give me 15 minutes. Glory five minutes. And I'll die. When I, when, I, when I begin to look at this passage, it began to mess with me. The passage messed with me so much that it was because of the fact that in this text, I see something that looks to be absent in today's church. In this passage of scripture today, it looks like David is willing to invite God to investigate his life. Happy birthday, Tyree. Yeah. 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 It looks like it looks like David did something that I don't think the church is comfortable with today. Yeah, so I don't think the church is comfortable with what David did because of the fact that the church seems not to have the same heart that David had. Now this is a confusing part passage to me because the church has the same activities that David had. But we don't seem to have the same heart. Wow. My God, my God. Meaning that we, we, we just like that, we fail at some stuff. We, we, we mess up some stuff. But the difference in him being a man after God's own heart and us sometimes struggling with who we are after what heart we are mm. is the fact that David was very truthful about who he was. Yes. Transparent about what he dealt with. So he could be transformed into who God would have him to be. That's good. David. It's truthful. It's transparent. Because of that, he was transformed. When I look at this today, the missing element of church is we have learned how to do church. But we don't want God to reveal the discoveries that he knows about us. Like, have you ever thought about, what, God, God what, what do you see in me? Okay, wow. so, so sometimes we look at that and oh, sir. you know, the good stuff that God has in store for our lives. But have you ever just been honest and said, man, I wonder what God thinking about, because he already know about what I'm doing. Like, like God, like, like, let's be honest right now. You know, like, like okay, so some, some of y'all have a, a, a different relationship with God. My relationship with God does not always start out with, Father in heaven. I'm talking to God like, yo, uh, for real. Yes. Yes. So for real. Um, yes. So we just do it like that. That's how we talk to God. Like that, you know? I just don't call him cuz. And I don't, you know, I don't call him jit. You know? I, don't, I don't call God jit and cuz. But, but you know, I just have real talks with God. Because it's hard for me to have communications with something I can't identify. Yeah. So I got to talk on my level. You know, talk to me. But, but have you ever been in that moment when you said to yourself, like, wow. God, you know all this about me. And you still keep dealing with me. So, 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 so knowing that I can't lie to God. The question is, why do I still try to hold on for what I hold on to? 
Here, here's the truth. A lot of us in here today, we are what would be considered stuck in a rut. A lot of us in here, we're stuck in a rut, meaning we're, we're in cycles. When you look up that word rut, you really get to find it talks about a groove in which something uh, runs. It's, it's, it's literally a fixed pattern. It's, 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 when we dive deeper into this word rut, the definition that I want to kind of face with today is it talks about uh, an urge to greed. All right. Wow. It's a desire to push beyond what has been the cycle. And a lot of people are afraid of the connection of next. So they stay in the moment of now. A lot of people really struggle with this. What, what, so, so what's next, God? What you got in store next, God? What we going to do next, God? Because for God to give us new dimensions, new levels, Sometimes it means that we have to be totally truthful with who we are and where we've been. Yes. I need somebody. Now, everybody's not going to catch this message today, but a few of you that believe that God got something for you that is greater, you, 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 you're going to really sit down this way. Matter of fact, I just touch yourself on the chest for a minute. I feel like God got more for me. <laughs> Note this here, but in order for us to experience the more of God, we must first be willing to submit to the move of God. Yes, yes. Everybody wants the more, but nobody wants the move. Yes, the move of God. So in order for us to experience the, the more of God, we must first be willing to submit to the move of God. But in order for us to get to the move of God, we must first be honest about our position with God. All right. All right. David here is talking future tense, David Snelly, but he's also talking about the now. He's talking about, Lord, now hold on. I want you to do something. I want to invite you to come into my life, within my circle, and I don't want you to come here and bless me. He says, I want you to come here and audit me. Come here and run a full-fledged audit on my life. Now, some of you have been through the audit procedure before. When you go through the audit procedure, you know that they, everything that is there is turned over. It's, everything is discovered. Everything is flipped over. Things are recommended when you go through audit processes. And what I found is that today's church don't want to go through audits. We don't want nobody else tapping into what we no want. Because no we have become the church that wants to create religion and also relationship with God and whatever is comfortable for us. Yeah. Even if it don't mean really being connected to him. My God. My God. Okay, y'all ain't talking about to me at all. So, so, so we have become the generation that literally wants to tell God how he should do it, even though we are the ones here because of his grace. Yeah. We're telling God, you know what, you need to do it this way and do it this way. I'm not going to give you this, but I will give you this. Like, we negotiate with God as if God needs us. Right. And he just looked down your road and us, your road, said, God don't need you. Don't need Tell him he just wants you. He just wants you. He don't need you. He, it's the difference when somebody needs you right. and somebody wants you. Oh, somebody married. Y'all heard me on that one. Yeah. That's the big difference when you are needed versus when you are wanted. Right. Some of y'all in a relationship right now, they just, somebody needs you. Oh, my gosh. That's the why there's no happiness there because there's a need, and the need is greater than the want. God wants you. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, God don't need you. Tell them, say, God wants you. And so, so when we understand this, so we got to understand that we got to first make sure we are about our position with God. Here's a serious struggle. Because here, a lost treasure with the saints has become because of the fact that we seem to be uh, in more exercise with God than we are in search with God. We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't want, we want to do God's things, but we don't want God to get into our stuff. Okay. That's the reason why we can give him what we want to give him when we feel like giving it to him. Yikes. Because we want to be in his things, but we don't want him in our stuff. Ooh. It's amazing when you are the creature that was created by the creator, and you're still telling him at what level he can be intimate with you. My God, my God. David discovered something. He discovered that I want to stop this rut. But in order for me to stop this rut, I have to put myself in position that God can advance me forward. Come on, tap yourself on chest again and say, God got greater for me. God got greater for you. So here becomes the problem. The church seems to be, have become desensitized from God, almost as if we are in a role reversal. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Where we are now being God. Here it is. Because we're telling him his will. Mm -hmm. Versus us living out the will that he has assigned to us. Jesus showed us what is the danger of if we decide to do our own will versus his will. Imagine if Jesus in the garden would have said, I'm not going through the process. 
I'm not going to do what you've called me to do, but I'm going to go home with my, my family and I'm going to settle myself. And, you know, whatever happens to them, happens to them. Imagine wow. what would be the results if Jesus decided I'm not going to fulfill the will of the Father who has sent me. And as we think about this, because a lot of us, here it is, a lot of us are so in the midst of us being able to make our own choices, but we don't think about it in the same conditions. Just as if Jesus would have walked away, imagine what would happen if some of the people who were waiting for you, here it is, had to experience you walking away from what he wanted for you to do in life. Because all of us in here, we got a purpose. Everybody here, you got to catch this. You have a purpose. You got a purpose in life. And the purpose in life is much bigger than what you want. Your purpose is also given to what's needed. I mean, somebody to catch that. There's a need for you in this earth. So here becomes the question. The question is, are we still giving God permission to be God in our lives? Or are we dictating directions to the creator himself? David says, I need you to do something. I need you to search me. The first point that I want you to make on this, I'll catch on this, is I need you to catch on that, uh, that, that, that we must be truthful. We must be truthful in this season of life. Take your notes, take it. We must be truthful. Because we were talking about this in the year to be. And in the year to be, we got to catch on to this in the year to be truthful. The Lord began to deal with me about this. He began to deal with the honesty of us. Note this, that honesty is not necessarily accountability to each other, but rather an honesty to him. It's an honesty to God. It's us being open to God and saying, watch this, saying to God, I, I know you know who I am. I, I know you know what I'm doing. And God, all I'm saying is, I want to just be truthful with you. All right. I begin to see and I begin to sense, and I, as I begin to see and sense this in the spirit, uh, the lack of who we are and what we are. The lack of who we are and what we are. Because oftentimes we begin to have discussions and as we're talking about things, we're talking about things and we begin to talk about the who we are. But we begin to talk to God from the fashion of what we want him to know about us. We don't talk to God about the truth about us. Because here's the truth. Many of us are not confused about who we are in God. We just want God to believe that we think we're better than we are. Okay, I said a lot there. We're not really confused about who we are in God. The truth I know you preach, I know you're a deacon, I know you're a church mother, I know you're a singer, I know you're a musician, I know that you're a youth member, I know you're a business owner, but the truth is, I already know who you are before you even open your mouth and stand in yeah. 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 And the truth of who we are sometimes is not attractive. That's right, that's right. Okay, okay. Well, here it is, okay, so, so y'all spend so much time fooling church folks, but the truth is you can't fool God. Because God already sees who you are, even before you open your mouth to indicate who you are. So, so here, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. I, I had to come to discovery. I had to come to discovery that who I am ain't that good. Yeah. Okay, this is the bishop talking. Who I am ain't that good. Who I am is flawed. Who I am has different types of failures. Who I am is shortcomings. Who I am, listen, I do some good stuff. But the truth is, my good stuff ain't only who I am. Okay, because a lot of y'all can testify to the same thing. That you got some good stuff going on, but that ain't just who you are. You got some good stuff and you got some bad stuff going on. Look, look it's about the road. Tell them, say, say, as good as you are, we ain't fooled by you. So, so here it is, here it is, here it is. Because I recognize there, there's a war within my limbs. There's a, there's a war within the inside of me. There's a war. There's something going on that is really a problem for me. And the truth is, I seem to only want God to address the side that I like. Because that's what I'm looking for blessings and favor and increase and abundance. But I don't want God to address the other side that I don't like. Y'all ain't talking to me. The reality is, some of y'all like the other side too, but there is. Uh, we find that Paul begins to relate to us. Paul talks to us. Paul says, when I want to do the good stuff, listen to me. He says, the, the effort is there, the desire is there. The, the mindset is there, the thought is there, but there's moments that me, Paul, the writer of this letter that's going out to the Romans, when I want to do the good stuff, man, every time I try to do good, it looks like evil is ever. So this is why I don't have the trip with some of y'all sanctimonious folks, because the truth is, some of y'all know good blood, your personality don't match the description of Christianity. Some of y'all say I'm Christians, but you don't act like no Christians. Y'all ain't talking to me. Look down your road, take your neighbor, and say, I got a good side of me. And tell them I got another side that you don't even want to know about. <laughs> y'all ain't working with me today. There's, there's two sides of me. It's like, there's another side of me. Don't want to have people know There is questions in my character, even when I'm being used by God. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, there. 
something I'm struggling with. Even though I'm trying to hold it together. And the truth is sometimes the pressure to perform is too heavy for me. Because sometimes I'm performing and then when I go to my own house or get in my own car, I feel the weight of me. Because I say, God, I know that you know, Lord, whether I'm right. You, 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 you know, Lord, whether I'm wrong. You know, Lord, y'all. Okay, okay. So that's just my testimony. Because all of us in here got a good side and a other side. Look at your neighbor. You tell your neighbor, I can see the other side on you. Oh, y'all scared to tell me, tell me, I can see the other side of you. I saw how you looked at her when she walked and stepped on your shoes. I saw the other side of you. I saw how you acted when that girl looked at you because she had been looking at your man. I saw the other side of you. I saw how you acted when they came in with the same outfit that you had. And you know you make more money than them. I saw the other side of you. I saw it. Y'all ain't talking to me. Some of y'all right now, what you need to do is uh, you need to ask God to suck me. Hey, put your hands up and say, God, search me, search me, search me. Oh, 
Now, if you have not been saved over three days and you've already discovered, here it is. You've discovered that you're thankful now that God didn't give you some stuff you asked for. Okay, y'all, don't play with that. Everybody married here, raise your hands real high. Raise your hands real high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody that's married, matter of fact, everybody happily married, raise your hands real high. Gotta ask that one too. Yeah, yeah, because everybody that's happily married, you know that it was some stuff that you had asked God for in the past that He didn't quite get to you. That today you look back at it, you go, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Lord, I thank you that you didn't get what I want. Because oftentimes we're talking from the season in which we're in, we're not talking from the season in which we're going. So sometimes you ask God for something for where you were, but it wasn't for where you was ready to go. And I feel like the Lord didn't give you what you asked for because if you didn't get what you asked for, you wouldn't be able to go what he got for you. Y'all ain't talking to me. I need everybody single in the house to catch it in your spirit. Stop being in a hurry and wait patiently on God because everything that you need, but when you're going, God says, I still got for you. relationships you ain't talking to me yeah the only reason why you got that one is because you didn't get that one you ain't talking to me and I hear the Lord say I want you to be patient and wait on me because I got something that's going to satisfy everything you need matter of fact I need you to look out the road tell everybody on the road say God's about to satisfy you tell him you ain't got to be in a hurry he gonna satisfy you matter of fact I speak it over your life that when it comes that he will catch up and you will forget every time that you had lack in your past because God's about to satisfy everything because what God Things that I see in the natural. And I came to tell somebody 
And what God's about to do is transform you to the next level. And that's the reason why the enemy keeps trying to bring you into fears in the midst of the process that you're going through. Because the enemy understands that if you ever become transformed in what you're dealing with, he recognizes that he will not be able to handle what God's about to do in your life. Paul says that in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter and verse number 2, he tells us to be not conformed to this world. But we need transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> I come to let somebody know today <laughs> that what you're going through is not a search. <laughs> that God's going to use it against you. <laughs> He's going through a search to take it out of you. <laughs> I need you to look down your road and tell your neighbor, say neighbor. This search that God is doing. <laughs> tell him, say, he's not trying to build up evidence against me. <laughs> uh, but tell him, he's trying to position me. <laughs> because he got something greater for me in the future. <laughs> but the enemy keeps telling me not to allow my mind to be renewed. <laughs> but I'm telling God that whatever you want to do, God, <laughs> I want you to work this battle out on the inside of me. <laughs> battle that just slap my father somebody in the air. <laughs> Because man, we're still in the COVID season. <laughs> and just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. Say, God is working some stuff out in me. Uh, tell him he's taking care of all considerations of me. He's moving me forward with confidence. Uh, that's the real battle that we're battling within this season. Is the real battle of the confidence that we have in God to know that. Whatever God discovers about me, he's not about to hold it against me. I need somebody to open your mouth right there and say, God, I'm willing to be transparent with you. Come on, say it again. Say, God, I'm willing to be transparent with you. Because I, I know that whatever you do, you're not going to hold it against me. The word of God says... It's not his will that any of us should perish. And so since we understand that God, he's warning and he's discovering things about me. And he's revealing things about my life. If he's not doing it to hold it against me, he must be doing it to promote me. Can I tell you that sometimes you have to shake off the stuff that's been trying to attach to you. Because God says, well, I'm about to take you. You can't have the stuff on you. That's the reason why you got to get comfortable and let some circles go in this season. Because everybody can't go with you and God is getting ready to take you. Look down the road again and tell everybody on your road. Say, I make no apologies in advance for us. Come on, tell them, say, I make no apologies in advance for what God's about to do in my life. Tell them, say, some folks got to drop off. Some folks going to have to step to the side because what God's about to do to me, he's about to lift me to another level. And so I got to tell God, I give you permission. What are you giving God permission to do? I'm giving you permission to work, God. Work until my thoughts begin to change, God. I'm giving you permission to work, God. Work until my feelings are no longer hurt anymore. I'm giving you permission to work, God. Work until my desires submit to you. I'm giving you permission to work, God. Work until the taste leaves my mouth. I'm giving you permission to work, God. Work until I mature in this walk. I'm giving you permission to work, God. Work until my circles have shifted. I'm giving you permission to work, God. Work until the glory comes out of my life. I'm giving you permission to work, God. Work until I satisfy your purpose. I just stop God and tell somebody in the house today that what God is doing, he's getting ready to put you to another level. I heard the Lord say, when I was working on this message, he said, this search is not for lesser. This search is for me to provide an increase. And I speak it over the house this year. And this is the year to be. And the Lord says, you're about to be better. Because some stuff is about to be revealed. Slap somebody hop out in the air again. I say, neighbor, say God is getting ready. He's getting ready to give me an advancement for what's about to take place in my life. So now that I'm in the 
position. I'll tell God, I want you to shine your light on me. Let the light from the storehouse, let it shine, shine on me. Is there anybody in the house today that'll open up your mouth and shout out, Lord, I'm not asking you to touch my name. I'm not asking you to touch my family members. But I'm asking you, Lord, I need you to search me. Search me, God. And if you find anything in me that should not be, I brought to the level. Take it out. Take it out of me. Is there anybody that's going to be honest with God today? Say, neighbor, say, the 
you don't really get a chance to get a real close look and a glimpse to the pressure that is applied to be who God has called you to be. Can I say to you, you're really not doing the work of God until you got pressure. 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 Because your pressure will be your pressure will be the illustration of faith. Because it will remind you that you are not doing this yourself. Right? It will remind you. Like, like have you ever been there when you used to say, oh my gosh, I'm out here so far by myself. That if you ever decide to take a step back from me, I'm going to sink. Right. God, you got back on this water? And I'm out here with the waves and stuff. So, the same activity that was in the boat is still happening right here. Come on. You got me out here? And all he said is just stay focused on me. Because if you stay focused on me, I'll let you keep walking. Stay focused.
want you to just take it out. Because I want to be light, I want to be saved, and I want to be whole. Is there anybody that want to be whole for real? Come on, sit down here and have a praise. This week, I want you to search me. I want you, come on, I want you to discover everything wrong about my life and reveal it to me. Hear this because this is not about anybody else's life, this is about your life. God, I want you to shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that is preventing me, Anything that is causing me to be disrupted, would you take away from me? Because I really want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be holy. I believe God wants to heal broken believers. Yes. Not the lost. Broken believers. Because we have believers who are broken. And it's a lot of pressure. This is not good pressure because you're trying to perform. You're trying to make people feel like, oh my gosh, you got to That's why you don't come to the altars. That's the reason why you, you don't, you're not revealing the things that you're dealing with. because of the fact that you are a broken believer. You're gifted, but you're broken. So you have the gifts of God. And you perform the gifts, but you're broken. Wow. And the Lord says, if you give me permission to search, I'm going to prepare you for the everlasting. Yes, thank you, Lord. Just give me permission to tell you. Because he's such a gentleman, he's not going to take over. He needs to be invited. If you're ready for change, ask him to search. If you're not ready for change, and some of you may not be ready for change, I will say to you, after hearing my message and ignoring it, it puts strong accountability in life. After you've heard this, ask God to search you. I know what I've been, but I know what I need to be. I need to be more like what you're calling for. If that's you, just look at it and say, I'm doing that this week, Pastor. I'm doing that this week. Search me this week, God. Search my heart. Search my mind. Search my motives. Oh, that's all. I really want God to search my motives. I told the church this morning that when I first started this church, my goal was I was going to have this big, this big church. I wanted 5,000 seats. That's what I wanted when I first started out. The Lord began to speak to me and show me me and show me how. You're you doing that for you. That ain't for me. I was like, but God, we have the saints coming from everywhere for you. He says, no, they're not coming for me. They're coming for you. And my motives had to change. I'm getting to the Lord. I no longer sell all my wish, my desire. If that's what you want to do, I'll take it. But it's not my inspiration. I don't care if I have 200 or 15,000 show up. Come on. I'll be the same. That's it. Because I'm about your purpose and not about my calls. So we all got to be if I'm doing that with ministry. I'm mean, asking what you probably doing with your business. Come on, come on. Is that business for God? Listen, because I'm not saying that God wants you broke. I don't believe in that. That's a lie. Could have hell. We would beat that broke spirit now. Now the poor should be with you always, but they say I had anyone else with you. That's what poor. And all poor people will be always. Listen, I need some people that got some money around me too. 